And how can I help you? I have an 1830s percussion pistol. I'm looking to sell it. Uh, I'm thinking about getting a more modern firearm for home defense. <laughs> Coming down to the pawn shop today to try to sell my 1830s percussion pistol. My uncle uh, gave it to me about 10 years ago. I think it could be worth as much as $1,200, but I would take uh, at minimum no less than $400. It's really neat. Yeah, I love guns from this era. So what do you know about it? I don't know too much about it. It's got the word Nook stamped here. It's a manufacturer that uh, I found on the internet back in Philadelphia back in the 1830s. The Nook, I never really heard of them. You have to realize, 1830s, a lot of gun manufacturers in the United States. The steel was easier to make. OK. The Industrial Revolution made it cheaper to make guns. Improvement in steel and manufacturing made it a lot easier for your average person to carry a pistol like this. A lot of antique pistols I get in here are made really fancy. They're not really made for personal protection. This one is definitely different. This thing was for personal protection, and it easily fit in your pocket. And that is a scary thing to look down. It's all in relatively good shape, but there is a lot of wear on it. Uh, we got all this on the barrel. OK. This gun is cool, but it really worries me. I've never heard of this maker. Normally, I'd bring in my buddy to take a look, but he's out of town right now. So buying this thing would definitely be a gamble. How much were you looking to get out of it? I think it's probably worth somewhere around $1,200. OK. If it was in better shape, I could see it being worth 1200 bucks. You know, I'll give you 400 bucks for it. <sighs> Can't we do a little better? Uh, five? I'll tell you what, I'll give you four and a quarter, and I shouldn't even go that high. How about 440 and I'll feel like I won? How about 430 and I'll feel like I won? How about 435 and we both win? OK, sounds like a deal. All right, go do the damn paperwork, Rick. Let's get it done. <laughs> I'm happy with 435, so uh, hopefully our home defense will be uh, upgraded at the house. So what'd you do? I mean, oh, yeah. you got me a little concerned. I, 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 got, I bought a gun. I don't think I did bad. Rick called me down to take a look at a gun that he purchased. He took a chance. We're going to see how he did. Hello, sir. Hey, what's going on, Sean? Good to see you. <sighs> OK, so what you have is an English traveling pistol. It's what they call a man stopper. These were gut guns. In England, you know, it's cold, it's nasty. You wear these big, heavy coats with big, deep pockets. And there'd be one of these pistols in each pocket for self-protection. And I mean, that, that would put a hurting on you. OK. And as far as time period, having a back action lock, 1830s, 1840s. The nice thing about it, it's, it's an English maker, and it's a very well-known maker. Knock. Knock? It looks like Nook to me. All right. The Nock gun making family is very, very well known. And to encounter one of these guns that were actually made by the family is really exciting. <sighs> I'm afraid to ask, but. I think I paid $435, something like that for it. You. <sighs> OK, you paid a little bit too much. Damn it. How much profit are we going to make? You're going to get at least. I want to say six to eight hundred for this. So, you know, as far as I'm concerned, any profit's a good profit. Well, that's true. It'll work, Rick. You're out of the doghouse. I never was in the doghouse. <laughs> so you think we can shoot it? Technically speaking, you know, the lock is in really good condition. The internals work correctly. I think you can probably shoot this. All right. You want to go out and shoot it tomorrow? Rick, you're like a kid with a new toy. You always want to play with the damn things. Put it in the case and sell it. Yeah, we'll go tomorrow. Man. <laughs> My dad's right. I like to shoot guns that I buy because it's fun. But it's also good for business. Because when you know a gun actually works, it makes it a hell of a lot easier to sell. All right, guys. Today, you're going to get a taste of what it was like. Back in the day, this was what was used for close quarter protection. This close to this close. Typically, these short barrel guns with the large caliber were called man stoppers. They were only good for a certain distance. That means 10 to 15 feet, maximum range, closest quarters. I mean, you could go right up to the belly, hence the, the term belly gun. It's not going to blow up my face or anything, is it? I hope not. OK. All right, guys, so who's the test dummy? <laughs> Sorry, chum. <laughs> Let's do it. <laughs> All right, chum, thinking you're in the streets of Paris, just minding your own business. And you see this guy approaching you, 
giving you kind of the stink eye, he's coming at you to rob you. So you gotta protect yourself. You know what you gotta do. Fire when ready. Damn right. All right, let's see you shoot this thing, chum. It's minding your own business. Careful, chum. Streets of Paris are rough. All of a sudden. S'il vous plaît, miso. What, you got a problem? I'll settle it. Can you just fire the damn thing already? <laughs> Merci beaucoup. <laughs> you did the job. <laughs> oh, you scared him off, Chum. <laughs> Good job. I'm psyched. Now I know the gun works. And we also know that Chumley can hit a target at point blank. <laughs> awesome. Merci beaucoup. Ha, ha, ha.